Hello everybody, welcome to episode number 70. So for this one, we're going to be doing a ton of skilling. Um, I don't really plan to do much bossing, as you guys know. I think I might try to go for 85s. I believe I did mention that earlier as well. It's just a little goal to go for. I'll probably do 85s and try to go for like all 90s. But I do have enough used to get myself from 86 to 87 fletching. I'll have about 1,000 left after that, so it's not enough to get me another level. But as it stands, I'm really not too sure what I'm going to be doing next. So there's fletching done with. I got a lot of levels from those used for mole. I actually have to go back and do about 1,500 more kills, so I'll end up getting more U logs from that eventually. I do still have all the maples from Kingdom. I did switch it to um, doing mahoganies and teaks now. But from the maples I got from Kingdom over the whole time of this account so far, I have enough to get from 87 to 90 fletching. It's just going to take a pretty long time. Ooh, so that's actually not as much as I was expecting to get from this. I think it's been eight days since I collected Kingdom. I mean, it's still a pretty decent amount of mahoganies, honestly, because they're like 140 each. So that's over 150k XP, but I was expecting a little bit more. So these are the amount of logs and planks I have. Actually, all of these are from Kingdom. I did switch from the Teaks to the Mahoganies. It is a little bit more costly, but it is more XP per day there. So I'm just going to be doing that since there is a pretty decent amount of ways to make money uh, really quickly now in Iron Man. So I'm going to be going for 85 woodcutting. Uh, that will get me a lot of construction levels as well. It'll probably get me a little bit over 85 too. But from all the logs and planks combined I have from Kingdom, I actually already have enough to get from 80 to 82 construction, which is pretty nice. Before I actually go and start woodcutting, there is one thing I have to do. I have to go and get more house teleports. I only have, I think, 100 soft clay left from doing Nex from Slayer. And I'm going to need around six to 700 to get myself to 85 woodcutting with banking all the logs. So I'm going to really quickly show you guys the method that I use to get soft clay. It's pretty nice. It's really quick. This method is relatively simple, so you're not going to need much for it. You're going to need a pickaxe, some uh, law runes in your inventory, and then what you're going to want to be wearing is a dust battle staff if you do have one. If you don't, you're going to have to take either an air battle staff and earth runes or an earth battle staff and air runes. And you're going to be using this to teleport to your house. You're also going to want a ring of dueling to be able to bank. You can use glories as well if you have them. The main thing you're going to want to have here is a bracelet of clay. What these do is when you mine clay, it automatically changes a clay into soft clay. I believe it's around 20 something charges on these, so you get a lot from it. Of course, it's really simple to make. You just make a sapphire bracelet and enchant it. You're also going to need to have your house set in Remington because you're going to be teleporting there. And once you teleport there, you're going to run northeast into this mine here. And in the corner, you'll see there is two spots to mine soft clay. Uh, when I was recording this, I actually did sit on one spot. It's better to sit in between both of them and go back and forth. It's a little bit faster, but these do respawn pretty much instantly. But uh, over time, it actually will be a little bit quicker. Once you have a full inventory, you have two options. If you don't want to waste law runes, you can simply run back over to the portal and enter your house. If you don't want to do that, you can just teleport straight to your house. And then it's as simple as just using your lectern and making them into house teleports. I believe this is about five to 600 made per hour, so you can make a lot doing this. Back to my favorite spot on RuneScape. You know, the best spot for content, sitting here clicking back and forth between two freaking trees. Uh, I do have 19 mil cash left. I'm not sure how much I'm going to lose from this. It's probably going to be around 11 mil, so I'll lose my green cash stack. I do have a bunch of alks still left in the bank, though, from doing Skatizo. I actually never alked all those. I probably have about 3 mil in rune alks from that. But we do have the dragon axe now, so this is going to speed things up a lot. Uh, also, the rune pouch is going to help out. So the only real thing that I could do here to make it better would be to finish Monkey Madness, too, so I don't have to wear the Gree Gree here. But as many of you know, I am never going to do that. That quest again because I really hate doing that platform. This is a pretty far along update. I've been here for a while now and I'm about to get to 85 woodcutting. There is one thing I did want to share with you guys. By the time you've seen this video, pretty much everybody probably knows about this if you keep track of um, the hardcores dying, but rank 2 actually did die doing Cerberus. I'm not too sure if it was a DC or if it was lag, but the worlds were lagging and DCing. Uh, at around the time that he died, so if that was the reason, that really fucking sucks. But in the end, it is good for me, since somebody in front of me dying means I gain another rank. But there is 85 woodcutting. Before I go and do construction, I need to make all of the logs I got from Kingdom into planks. I've shown this method many, many times, so I'm just going to show again briefly for the people who actually haven't seen the whole series. Uh, you can make 6,000 planks this way per hour. I have about 3,000, so it should take a little bit longer than half an hour. It's really simple. You go to PvP World and Camelot, you... Uh, teleport to your house, and in the very bottom corner, you click on the spot and allow you to call your servant really quickly. And then you hit one space, one space to go through the options quickly. You teleport back to Kami. Since there's a bank really close, that's the reason you do it in a PvP world. But you just do that and repeat. It's the same as cutting the logs. You give them to your butler and it'll automatically uh, make the planks and put them to your bank. Decided to use Mahogany's first, and of course we're making tables since they're insane XP per hour. Uh, there is a spot if you line up your camera nicely in fixed mode in resizable. You can actually click on the very, very bottom of your screen and you'll see there is a build and remove option on the same square. So you actually don't have to remove your mouse. 
and then you can just hit your keyboard keys for the shortcuts, uh, six being build, one being remove. Uh, it's really nice with screen markers, but this is just how you do it if you guys were curious. I am at 81 construction right now, almost 82, but I do have enough teaks to get me to exactly 86 construction, of course, unless I messed some math up, which I hope I didn't. Thankfully, this time my math was right. Last time I tried to do this, I screwed up on my math, and I was like, I think... 30 behind or something on the amount of teaks I needed to get the level I wanted. I am doing the teak garden benches again. Um, you guys have seen me do this, but there is 86 construction, 2065 total, ton more XP added. I think my total XP right now is 187 mil. Now comes the part where we try to find what to do next. As usual, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing now. This is something I've been wanting to test actually since I started doing crafting like four or five months ago. The reason I put it off is because you have to, you guys will see what I'm talking about in a second, but with the shift drop being added to the game, it makes this a lot more feasible as a method. I am 137k away from getting to 88 crafting though, so that's what I'm going to be going for right now. Um, it's kind of an excuse just to get an easy level and to test something out. So what I'm actually going to be doing here is buying the seaweed and soda ash using super glass make as usual to make um, the molten glass, but we're going to be making these Dorgishan light orbs instead of doing the lantern lenses. The only difference is you can sell the lantern lenses back to the store. With the light orbs, you actually have to drop them because the charter guy will not buy them back. So a shift drop being added just makes dropping them a lot quicker. But I'm going to be testing this method for an hour and I'll let you all know how much XP I get from it. I'm hoping it's going to be over 80k. I still think it's going to be better to use our thieving for 99 crafting, but this could be another method for the people that really don't care about post max XP. So this is incredibly good. I gained 90k XP in an hour of doing this. Of course, I got a lot better at dropping these orbs as it went by. You guys will see in a second. I kind of just started dropping them like I was equipping gear if I was doing PKing. I'm not too sure how much it costs per hour. I didn't keep track of the astros I used, so I'm sorry for that. I completely forgot to do it. Another thing worth mentioning here is you need 87 crafting to make these. So it's not like you can do this from level 50 or 60. You need 87 crafting. After testing this for about 45k more XP since I did want to get to 88, which you guys will see on the screen right now, it's pretty consistent XP. I was still on about 88k per hour, so just expect upwards of 90k if you pay full attention and nobody else is here doing it. Actually, that's not true. If somebody else is here doing it, you can still get um, the max XP for it. You just have to kind of share which worlds you're doing. I have one person do 1 through 40, the other person do like 40 through 80 or 40 through 90. As you can see, probably saw this from the thumbnail and expected it to happen eventually. We're going to be doing 80 to 85 fishing now. Incredibly AFK, I'm not going to be tick manipulating it. I know you guys are probably going to leave comments, or at least some of you. DVS, how do you expect to get rank 1 when you're not tick manipulating? Um, I just don't like doing it, guys. It's more for me to just take a break, chill, watch the movies and stuff. I'll probably be watching uh, the TV show Narcos. I've been wanting to watch it for a while, and there hasn't been really much AFK stuff for me to do in games, so that's going to be what I'm going to be doing right now. Up to 83 fishing, but I did need to take a break to show you guys this level right here being 85 farming. I still am doing my papayas. I'm almost out of maples. I can't remember how many maples I got from all. I got a lot, but there's like five maples left. So I'm going to start doing willow soon. I also did start doing my calquats. I still have to start doing my spirit trees. I'm kind of slacking on those. But there is another 85 down, two more fishing levels to go, and then we'll start doing something else going for another 85 more than likely. So there's yet another 85 down. I mentioned to you guys I was going to be watching the show Narcos. It's actually really good. I finished the whole first season. I believe there is two right now. So if you guys do have Netflix, it's a show I recommend you go and watch. Uh, it's about Pablo Escobar. It's pretty cool. But as I've been doing fishing, there's two other things I've been doing as well. I've been doing herb runs with all my toad flax. And I've also been collecting these sturgeons every time I went to bank. And also, all of these fishing levels did get me very close to 81 agility. I'm 57k XP off. A little bit over 1,300 Toad Flax in the bank right now, which is a bit over 240k Herblore XP. I did also collect 319 Sturgeons. What I did was every time I was about to do a Herb Run before I tallied out, I'd get a full inventory of Sturgeons. If you don't know, what you do with these is you actually use a knife on them and it creates caviar. And you use the caviar with two-dose potions to make mixes. And these mixes give you, depending on what they are, I think anti-fires are like 60 XP. So it's an additional 18k Herbler XP, and you can make them pretty quick too. So if you guys do um, fishing and you do herb runs while you're doing that, I recommend baking the sturgeons. Because it'll give you a nice amount of XP with mixes over time. So now I'm going to try to explain to you guys why I'm doing agility before 99 fishing still. So I want to do agility, of course, to take a break. I want to try to get all 85s. Like I said, it's going to be more efficient for me to do 99 fishing before even touching agility. The reason I'm using this course and not Sears is because you get about the same amount of XP 
I think Sears is about 1k more if you have the diary done. And from this one, you're going to be getting more marks. I really only care about the marks right now. I have like 1300 super energies in my bank. So doing agility here and getting a lot of marks is going to get me the amylase for that, which will help me get to 85 herb. So my plans for all of the other skills, I'm going to do 85 agility right now, which should get me to 85 herb. After that, I'll probably go back and forth between skills that are AFK and click intensive, just so I'm not doing like too much click intensive stuff and burn myself out. Okay, so these are going to be the final updates of the video. I've gained a total of 400k agility XP. We are up to 82 and about 45% to 83. So in terms of the herb, I'm still doing all these herb runs all the time as well. We have almost 1,800 Toad Flax farmed, which when made into Cerebrews is 321k herb XP and 129 marks of grace so far. Uh, from 400k total XP. As for the stats, I decided I want to be showing the top 25 now instead of just my stats uh, so you guys can see how everybody else is ranked, how many levels everybody else is gaining. So I am rank 8 right now for total level. I'm actually very, very close to getting to rank 7 too. I do have two people dead in front of me, so technically you could say that I'm rank 6 if you don't count the people who are dead. And on time to max, I am currently rank 7 right now. Crystal Farm is very, very close to me, but I'm also close to Zobby, who's ahead of me. I'm actually pretty close to Nex as well, who's rank 5 from time to max. Also, it looks like Guile did finally manage to break 1,000 um, hours left on time to max, so he's the first person to do that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. Not sure what the next one's going to be. I actually do plan to make some Deadman Mode tournament videos. Uh, I do want to play that. I'm not going to play the normal um season i don't really care about that i might just take a break and do the tournament that's five days long and post a video every day on that and i'll see you guys in the first video with that on the 26th